So I've argued that all of these psycholinguistic experimental methods that give us access and insight into the dynamics of how human language understanding and human language use unfolds in real time give us both scientific and engineering opportunities. The scientific opportunity is to construct a detailed theory of how one of the most distinctive human properties of the mind works in fine detail. The engineering opportunity is to use human data in fine-grained rich detail to enrich our models of language for artificial agents to advance technology. And as the beginning of a lot of this, we're going to go forward and do a lot of this going through, going through the rest of the classes. But I want to present a theory that turns out to be very simple, but very powerful in accounting for one major class of processing phenomena, that is differential difficulty. How difficult is a word to accommodate in the context in which it appears? There's a simple proposal that was originally due to Hale in 2001 and that I worked on a lot as well, which is to say that a basic information theoretic quantity is actually the best quantifier of that. And in particular, that's the word surprisal. And recall from our introductory information theory that the difficulty of the surprisal of a word is simply the log of its inverse probability in the context in which it appears. So for example, for isolated sentence processing, we might use just the preceding words in the sentence as, the, as a representation of the context. And this immediately captures one of the basic intuitions that I hope to have primed in you over the course of today, which is that expectation plays a huge role in language processing. The more we expect an event, the easier it is to process. We saw this in reading times and fixation uh, probabilities and so forth. Uh, we also saw it in the electrophysiological response like the N400 and even the P600 perhaps. So um, brains are prediction engines and predictable words are read faster and have distinctive EEG responses. And later on, uh, once we have uh, grammatical tools, formal mathematical descriptions of natural language grammar, we'll be able to combine probabilities and grammar together to get grammatical expectations. This, you may remember, is a surprisal graph. An obligatory event with probability 1 carries 0 bits of information. It might as well not have occurred. It doesn't contain any information, but it has to occur. And probability goes off asymptotically to infinity as probability decreases toward 1. An impossible event is infinitely surprising, but fortunately it never occurs. Now, it turns out that qualitatively, and we'll go into this later on once we have more tools, a lot of the qualitative phenomena involving grammatical structure are actually quite amenable to a surprisal-based analysis, um, as I've described before. But let's actually look more quantitatively and ask, what is the shape of the relationship between the probability of a word in its context and how long people take to, um, to process, how difficult it is? And we'll use as a difficulty proxy processing time and a particular reading time, which you've seen a lot of today, you've seen that it's a very sensitive measure for incremental language processing. And so we'll use reading time, and this is a study that I'll refer to, which uses reading time in two different methods, self-paced reading and eye tracking. Um, and what we need um, in order to do this is that we're going to use what are called non-parametric statistical techniques that allow us to reveal the shape of a relationship between one variable and another in a data set. And the variables in it of interest are going to be probability or log probability and time. But in order to do this, we actually have to take into account that there are other kinds of variables that are going to be in the mix as well. So as an example, I've alluded to the fact, and you saw evidence, that word frequency also affects language processing difficulty and reading times. And actually, it's, it was already established decades ago that the quantitative shape of the effect of word frequency on processing time is linear in the log frequency. And Word frequency and word predictability are correlated. You can see this positive correlation. So what we need to do is you, we need to use a lot of data. So uh, the study result that I'm going to show you is one that uses sort of data in this quadrant here, and it's about five to four to 5,000 words from one data set and actually almost 50,000 words from another data set. This is um, a set of texts in American um, English, and this is a set of British newspaper text read by um, speakers in the UK. And so what we use is what's called, and we're not going to go into the details of this, but we're going to use a generative addi generalized additive model uh, for regression analysis, which is able to reveal the curve shape of the relationship between log probability and processing time and the, um, and the, uh, and the differential in reading time. And so that is above and beyond the other factors, like word length and word frequency. What is the contribution of a word's probability in its context to how long it takes to read? And it turns out that over several orders of magnitude, and this is using a trigram language model, 
We'll look at, we'll revisit this result later on in the semester using more recent, more sophisticated models with deep learning. But in a trigram language model, it turns out that the relationship is more or less linear. That for one, um, these sizes are constant in bands. And so for every factor of 10 decrease in word probability, you have more or less a constant increase in the amount of time spent reading the word. This is true both in self-paced reading and in eye tracking, and even the magnitude of the effect is pretty similar through the two methods. Um, and this is, you know, really uh, quite, quite cool. And so what we can actually do is we can now hope to even start quantifying, putting a slope on how much time per bit or per band of information is required. And so this result came out to be about three milliseconds per bit or so. And this is the beginning, I hope, of the ability to create a more quantitative theory, not just a qualitative theory, but a quantitative theory of human language processing. And it turns out this very basic information theoretic quantity is going to be quite useful for this. We're going to see the use of surprisal in a number of other contexts as well throughout the course of the semester, but hopefully this is a good first illustration. Thanks.